This is the very first trail-ready trim for the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. It's called the Woodland Edition. We have a complete review plus an off-road trail test, right now on Driving Sports TV. The hybrid version of the Toyota RAV4 has always been my favorite. Sure, there have been some off-road focus trims like the Adventure and the TRD, but when it comes down to it, the hybrid edition just delivers more of what RAV4 buyers are looking for, both in terms of capability as well as economy. With the Woodland Edition here, Toyota is finally giving the RAV4 hybrid some extra off-roading goodness. Over the standard trim, this one includes some great looking 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped in Falcon Wild Peak trail tires. It also gets specially tuned suspension, a roof rack, nice mud flaps and mud mats. Price as you see it here without any extra options, 34,360 US dollars, including destination. Under the hood is the same powertrain you would find on a standard RAV4 hybrid. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine combined with a set of three electric motors that all together produce a peak 219 horsepower. In the back is a dedicated 54 horsepower electric motor that provides all wheel drive without needing a drive shaft. This kicks in when extra traction is needed. EPA rates economy at 38 miles to the gallon in town and 35 on the highway. There is an EV only mode, but it's only for speeds under 25 miles per hour, and it has a very limited range. If you want to be able to run in EV mode all the time, albeit with limited range, you really want to step up to the more expensive RAV4 Prime, which I think is the ultimate RAV4. If you don't mind the extra money, and if you can actually find a RAV4 Prime without a horrid additional dealer markup on the price, uh, I do believe that the Prime would be a natural step up from this Woodland Edition here, albeit without the extra off-roady goodness that this one comes standard with. Open the rear gate, and yes, it is manual at this trim level, not powered. Here you get 37.6 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Fold all the seats flat for a maximum of 69.8 cubic feet overall. Of course, you're probably curious, can you sleep in it? Actually, yeah, this isn't bad. Now I can't really stretch out. I'm six foot one and it's a little snug, but it's really not bad considering this is a compact. While we're back here, also take note of the Woodland specific rubber mat seat back protectors, and under the floor is a partial spare tire. Not a full one. Oh well, guess he can't have everything. In the second row, we get cloth seats. And yeah, it feels a little bit like a bench. It's not the most comfortable, uh, but I do get Woodland inspired floor mats down here, two USB-C sockets, vents, and a fold down armrest with cup holders. I am six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and I fit pretty good. I am leaning quite a lot. I wonder if I can adjust this. No, I guess you just lean a lot. Hmm. Up front here, you might notice this isn't loaded with features. I mean, we do get dual zone climate control, which is nice. Uh, we have infotainment, but it is a small screen, um, especially by Toyota standards. They're putting these massive things in everything, but this just gets a little eight inch unit. Uh, and then over here, we have, of course, a combination digital and analog gauge cluster. It's not like one of the fancy all digital versions they've been putting in things. Well, the steering wheel is hard plastic. Same thing with the gear selector. Uh, but overall, this is an interior that I think is pretty usable. You know, you have these large dials for climate, uh, which is good if you're wearing mittens. Uh, we have a little tray down here that we can put the phone in. It is not a charging tray, it is just a tray. And then we get a USB-A socket here with a 12 volt. And in here, we get two USB-C sockets. In the middle, we get a few different driving options. We have trail mode, eco, sport, normal, and an EV mode. 
Now this EV mode, of course, is barely an EV mode. It's really just a sneaking into the driveway in the middle of the night kind of mode. You can't actually use it as an EV. The battery in this vehicle is simply too small. But it is there if you need to basically, you know, drive it like a golf cart, very short distances. Seat is relatively comfortable. Um, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's <laughs> $34,000. I drive a lot of very expensive vehicles, and I would say these seats are... They're okay. I think that the Subarus that you get at this price level are more comfortable than the RAV4 here. Uh, so if seat comfort is a priority, you might look at maybe a Forester instead, although that is not hybrid, of course. So maybe you want to take a look at, I don't know, the Kias or the Hyundais. One nice addition for this 2023 model is we actually get the new infotainment system. Um, albeit it's on a very tiny screen. Now this gives us navigation, uh, it gives us XM satellite radio, phone integration, vehicle configuration, all that kind of stuff in a very easy to use touchscreen format. And most important, it actually provides wireless Apple CarPlay, which looks very nice, albeit again on a very small display. In terms of safety, of course, we have all the greatest hits, collision mitigation, blind spot warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering. We also get a rear view camera with tracking lines, which is nice. So I think we've looked at this vehicle. What we're gonna do now is take it for a quick drive on the streets, and then we're gonna hit our peninsula off-road course and see just how well this vehicle can deal with tricky situations. There's a very long list of reasons why this RAV4 hybrid is so incredibly popular. Probably, I think the top ones are uh, economy. You're looking at 38 miles to the gallon in the city, which is mind blowing. Uh, the fact that it is a hybrid powertrain that also has all wheel drive. Uh, so you're getting that great economy with the capability of a traction based all wheel drive system. And then there's the packaging. This thing it's a brick, you know, you got lots of room in the back as well as room for two full-size adults in the second row. Uh, three if they're a little bit smaller. So really what you end up with is a vehicle that is just incredibly flexible. Whether you're single, you have a family, you like to go hiking on the weekends, or all you do is go grocery shopping in the city. This really is a vehicle that can do everything. And of course, it is based on the Toyota hybrid powertrain, which at this point is very well proven. Um, I don't think anybody's produced quite as many hybrids for as long as Toyota has. So we get reliability, economy, styling. I think it actually looks pretty good. And of course you have utility. That is a little bit of everything. But one thing that the RAV4 Hybrid didn't offer is an off-road package. Sure, you could get the TRD with a standard powertrain, but if you wanted hybrid, you were pretty much left in the dust. With this new Woodland Edition, you finally get a hybrid that is set up for trails. Now, I'm not gonna say this is an off-road rock crawler because it simply is not. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't even take this on very difficult trails because I just don't think it has the capability for that. Um, sure, they've thrown some Wild Peak tires on it from Falcon, which are very good tires in general. These are, of course, the Toyota OEM version of the Wild Peaks, which means they are not snow rated like the proper Wild Peak. They also have uh, far less miles than you would get on a proper retail version of the Wild Peak, but it is still a very good tire, and I think it's an excellent choice considering the capabilities of this vehicle. There are a few changes beyond just the tires in this vehicle. Uh, the suspension's also been enhanced uh, to be better for trail situations. So it's kind of using some of the parts off the TRD model, uh, but you don't get the like trick rear diff that you get with the TRD. Instead, we still have the same dedicated electric motor in the back uh, with brake vectoring to shift the power side to side. So we talk about capability, we talk about trail driving, but the big question is, is just how capable is this thing? At what point does it throw in the towel? So I'm not taking this vehicle out to our Eastern Washington test course, simply because that course 
is way more rugged, way more challenging, and vehicles are more prone to damage. This vehicle has no extra underbody protection over the standard RAV4. So instead, I'm taking this to our Peninsula Off-Road Park. Uh, this contains a number of courses that will really test the capability of this brake vectoring based all-wheel drive system. That means that it'll apply brakes to shift power around left to right um, and then front and back is controlled electronically on this one because of course it has a dedicated electric motor powering the rear wheels and it'll be really interesting to see exactly how often that comes on and how much power like usable power it actually puts back there now i've driven this rav4 hybrid on a number of different off-road courses in the past and it usually impresses so once you put wild peak trail tires on it does it get even better? That's what we're gonna find out right now. We do have several tests here at our Peninsula Off-Road Course, and I'm gonna try to take this vehicle through all of them. <laughs> but we're gonna start, of course, with the easy one, Chicken Run. So Chicken Run is called that because it literally goes around my chicken coop. <laughs> Uh, this will test the ability of the vehicle to shift power side to side. Also, a little check our clearance as we go over some uh, kind of steep breakovers. Uh, again, not a big deal for something like a 4Runner or a Jeep Wrangler, uh, but for compact crossovers, some of them struggle here. So we're going to see how well this one does. So I have a little over 8 inches of ground clearance, which should be sufficient already. We're taxing that brake vectoring system. Let's go ahead and switch this into trail mode. Uh, now, if you get something like the TRD version of the RAV4, you have um, the MTS system, the Multi-Terrain Select, which allows you to pick different programs, essentially, for the brake vectoring setup. Uh, this one, you just get one big button that says trail. So it's really simple. Go ahead and push forward a little bit. And I'm just easing on the throttle because I want to stress the system. I'm not going to, ooh, scraping the back. Quite a lot actually. Scraping the sides. Oof. Okay, I gotta take I gotta take a look at this. I feel like that's that's a lot of uh, breakover sounds. So tailpipe dragged a little bit. Oh, we're high centering. Oh, interesting. We are high centering right on the hump. So I'm gonna go back a little bit and bring the vehicle over more to the driver's side. Oof, that's a lot of scraping. Okay, we don't want to hit the exhaust on the side there, so we're going to go left. Try not to slam it. See if we'll clear a little better this time. I'm kind of surprised with the lack of clearance on this thing. It kind of looks like it sticks down a little bit. Power is getting shifted, slowly working us over. Definitely got a wheel up back there. Okay, and the power gets shifted around, and down we go. And I'm using the brake to make sure that we don't slam it. Huh. Well, that definitely uh, took a little bit of work. Let's see how it does on the double ditches now. This will test articulation uh, as well as ground clearance. And uh, might even uh, test out the approach angle which is not great on this, it's about a 19. So <laughs> uh, I'll back out if I feel like this is gonna break something as usual, but let's see how it does. So I gotta be really careful of my approach so I don't just slam down. I'm gonna try to drive into it. I'm just at, my throttle is just consistent. I'm just holding my throttle and I'm slowly increasing it to see if we can climb up. Okay, now teetering. I'm trying to two pedal it best I can because I want to go slow, but I'm also kind of pushing the brake a little on and off. And of course it doesn't like it. It's telling me that I'm using both pedals and yeah, I know. I think we're going to hit on the left. Yeah, we're grinding a little. And I don't think we're grinding just a little. I think that's a lot. We may not be able to clear this. <laughs> oh, solid. And we're not going to lift for another couple feet. So I'm afraid we cannot complete this. Nope. Got to back out. Uh, basically, the second hump is it's too high. 
And with the wheel in the ditch, I just don't have enough, enough central ground clearance because it kind of sticks down a little bit. So I'm rubbing right there. Uh, so even though they do claim over eight inches of ground clearance, it's where that clearance is that matters. And this one just doesn't have enough clearance where it matters. Uh, oh, and to answer your question that you're probably wondering, yes, trail mode works in reverse as well. Slowly get us up over the hump. I feel like I'm just playing this video in reverse right now. There we go. And gently down we put it. Okay, well, we're not done yet. We have another test, uh, our logging trail. So let's see how it does on that. In the Pacific Northwest, if you're out trying to find a nice trailhead or adventuring around the woods, uh, you are likely to encounter a logging road because that's how we get up into our forests around here. So uh, right here, we have one that looks very much like the kind of logging roads that you can find on the forest here in the Pacific Northwest. It is, well, <laughs> it's kind of a mess and it's built that way on purpose. So what this will do is it'll test the capability of this vehicle to shift power left to right, as well as how much power that rear electric motor can put to the ground to help push the vehicle up this tricky situation. I really like this test uh, because I designed the course to mimic a particular forest road that we've ventured up numerous times. Uh, so it's modeled after a real world forest road. And I think it's just hard enough for a vehicle like this. Now, can we get up it without scratching, breaking, or getting stranded? That's what we're gonna find out. So we have taken a number of vehicles up here, even the Corolla Cross Hybrid uh, kind of made it up, although that's kind of a bit of a disaster tale. Uh, that ended up having me remove one of the boulders off the course because it was just the course was getting too difficult. Come on, let's get up and over. So we're going climbing up and over a rock on the left. Uh, I am putting my brakes on, but you will notice when I do the put the brakes on here, even if I put them on softly, it stops really quickly. It's a very, uh, they hit really hard. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to try to climb up that back rock with the electric motor. Whoa, rocks. Okay, let's see what we're doing. It seems like it's not shifting power, it's just spinning wheels. Never had a vehicle smoke that much there. That's kind of crazy. Okay, well, everything seems good. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Oof, that was a lot of smoke. Oh man, it is not happy with me. I don't find this trail to be particularly difficult uh, if you're driving in the correct vehicle. Like anything with a, a locking system will walk right up it. Come on, let's get a little momentum here. There we go, a little momentum up and over. Trying to ease it down. Okay, cleared the boulder. I think it's important to note that other vehicles have made it up this without this much of a challenge, even some compact crossovers. The Subaru Forester Wilderness, no problem, went right up it. The Jeep Compass Trailhawk, again, no problem. Now we're just climbing up out of this last ditch. I'm just slowly easing up because I don't want to break anything. And now we have to clear that rear driver's side tire. Ooh, a little bit of grinding on the exhaust and we are good. Wow, that was a bit more of a challenge than I was expecting. Let's look for scratches. So if you're wondering why I haven't tested the hill descent control system, it's because this vehicle does not have one. That's right, it's a woodland, but no hill descent control it does have a trail mode. And as we saw the trail mode, it works okay. Uh, you do have to put a lot more effort into getting up even fairly, you know, really simple logging roads uh, with this system, something that like a forerunner wouldn't even blink at. Uh, but in this class of vehicle, the hybrid CUV, that's kind of what you get. I mean, if you're gonna look at this vehicle or something in this class, there's really no competition as far as providing an off-road capable 
uh, or at least a trail road capable <laughs> uh, hybrid crossover. I think the best competitor to this would probably be the upcoming PHEV version of the Jeep Compass, but we can't buy that yet, so it doesn't really count. But I, yeah, overall, it's not bad. I mean, if, you, if you're really not going into any challenging situations and you just need to kind of, you know, cross a drainage ditch every once in a while, this vehicle will be totally fine. It's comfortable, it's capable, uh, it's priced right, and it also has really good economy thanks to that hybrid powertrain. Uh, if you do need more capability, definitely go to something like the Subaru Forester, which I've tested on the same course, and it it climbed it basically without blinking. Um, or you you know you can go to any of the other more capable vehicles in the class, but unfortunately they're all petrol only. Got a lot of scratches on the uh, aero plastic piece there, but that's okay. The wheels have come out unscathed, even though they're 18 inch wheels and they don't have as much sidewall as I would like in this classic car. Uh, they did not get scratched, so that's good. Okay, now back here, we did do a little scratching on the exhaust, and that's due to the departure angle not being so great. It does kind of rub a bunch, uh, but the same thing kind of happens with the approach angle on the front. So overall, if you're looking for a hybrid compact crossover that can take you up the most rugged trails known to man, this is not it. But if you do want a family-friendly crossover uh, that can get you shopping, groceries, and the trailhead on the weekend with excellent MPGs, the RAV4 Hybrid Woodland Edition. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos, make them for you. I hope you enjoy them.